hello everyone. Uh, I am Nayan Deshmukh, and today I'll present the work that I did as part of Google Summer of Code 2018. So the title of my project was Improving the Linux slash DRM Scheduler. So I was mentored by Christian Connick for the project. Uh, and this is my first time in XT, XDC. So, so first I'll talk a bit about me, then I'll go into deep about DRM scheduler, and I'll try to advertise it a bit so that more people use it, more drivers use it. Then I'll talk about my project and some of the future work that can be done. Okay, so I did GSOC this year, and shortly after that, I graduated from IIT Kanpur with a bachelor's degree in computer science. And uh, I have recently joined Samsung. Uh, during my GSOC, I worked on with the DRA Devil community. And I have worked with the Misa community before this. OK, now we can move on to the scheduler. So a bit history about the scheduler. So the scheduler was part of the AMD GPU and was shifted to a shared space so that it can be used by other drivers and it is now called the DRM scheduler. Uh, now it is being used by the AMD GPU and the uh, Etna View driver, which is the graphics driver for Vivante GPUs, and also recently the Broadcom V3 driver. Okay, so we are done with a bit of the history. Now we'll look at the organization of the scheduler. So uh, I'll use the word job a lot. So job is the most uh, it's the basic unit which can get executed on the hardware engine. So uh, here is the hardware engine, and it has a hardware queue here. And the responsibility of the scheduler is to push jobs to this hardware queue. The scheduler itself has the software queues, and the driver is responsible for pushing, uh, for pushing jobs to this software queues. The scheduler then schedules these jobs on the hardware queue. Uh, it has multiple software queues, uh, which represent different priorities of jobs, and it also handles dependency. Uh, dependencies as in like job J1 can depend on J2. So uh, job J1 cannot be executed unless job J2 has finished executing. So this is some of the things that scheduler takes care of. Now we'll go into a, a bit more depth into the organization of scheduler. So apart from the jobs, scheduler has something called entity. So each entity has a dynamic list of jobs. Dynamic as in uh, we push jobs to this list, and jobs are removed from this list once they are pushed to the hardware queue. And the list of jobs in the entity have a special property that they have to be executed in the order that they were pushed to the queue. Uh, and we have a queue of these entities, which we call the run queue. This is the same queue that I showed here. So it does not have jobs directly, but it has entities. Now, uh, there are different kind of dependencies. So let's say I talk about a few dependencies. Let's say here is the type A dependency, which means J2 depends on J1, which is the very trivial one, which is the property of the entity itself. The other is the B type of dependency, where J1 depends on J3 which is a job in another entity, but in the same queue. Uh, there's a third type of dependency, C, in which the job depends on another job, which is on a different queue, on different hardware engines itself. So uh, there's one special property of the hardware queue that it executes the jobs in the order in which they were pushed. So we can do some kind of optimization here as once this J1 is pushed to that hardware queue. We do not need to wait for J1 to complete because we can just push J2 to the hardware queue as well because we know that they would be executed in order. So this dependency optimization comes in picture uh, during my project because I need to take care of this dependency optimization. So, okay. Now, every hardware engine has its own scheduler in uh, instance. So it runs as different kernel threads and different Schedulers are not aware about their existence and do not have any communication in between. So once we create an entity, we attach it to a particular scheduler and the entity remains attached to that particular scheduler. And the jobs on that entity are scheduled on that particular scheduler or the hardware engine that is associated with that scheduler. 
Uh, now there is one important thing. So what happens if we have multiple copies? Let's say we have multiple compute nodes. So in that case, when I create an entity, I'm attaching it to that particular computer node and the other compute node may be empty. So this can lead to load imbalance because we are assigning entities statically to compute nodes, let's say. So my project was to introduce some kind of dynamic load balancing into the picture so that we do not, uh, we can avoid this kind of scenario. So what I implemented was shifting of entities so that uh, we can shift entities from one scheduler to another scheduler. And for that, we needed some kind of communication between different schedulers. So the driver is the one that knows about this different kind of hardware units and how many copies do we have. So what I did was modify entity such that the driver provides it the multiple instances of schedulers on which it can schedule its, its job. Yeah, so uh, the driver provides uh, different schedulers possible for an entity to schedule its job. Now, uh, we shift an entity when a new job is pushed to that entity. So this is one of the decisions that I made to make my project simpler. And I will talk about different options that I had. Uh, also, shifting of an entity is not straightforward in all cases because it might not be correct. So let's, uh, let's talk about the case that I previously mentioned that we can op do some dependency optimization and we can push one job to the hardware queue and we do not wait, need to wait for its completion. We can also push another job. But let's say we have pushed uh, one job into the queue and we then shift it. We shift the entity to another scheduler. And the scheduler thinks that it's okay to push the job to the hardware queue and it will do so. So we have two jobs in two different hardware queues and it might happen that J2 gets scheduled first before J1, so which might not be correct. So we need to avoid that kind of scenario. So we need to identify the cases where it's okay to shift the entities and also it's beneficial. So the case that I was just describing, in that case, shifting the entity does not help us because we cannot schedule it until J1 has finished. So we need to wait for that time. So that's why we need, we need to identify the cases where it is correct and beneficial to shift the entities. So uh, do you have any questions about this or have I confused you guys? Is it okay? Yes, no? Okay, I will take it as a yes. <laughs> okay, so my project was uh, around 3.5 months and it was divided into three phases. So during the first phase, most of the time was spent on understanding the code and it was uh, my first time working with Linux kernel, so I had to read up about the kernel APIs also. So during the first period, I added documentation to the scheduler and uh, I also cleaned up the API. There were some redundant calls and some things like that, so I, cleaned, I did that during my first phase. During the second phase, I discussed various ideas that were possible for our implementation. And I decided to go for a small and but a simple implementation instead of going for a more ambitious one. So I wanted to have simple implementation which I could get upstream by the end of the internship instead of having a more big, more ambitious project which I could not. So that was a good step because uh, a lot of time was spent in debugging my code that I wrote. So uh, by the end of the second phase, I started writing my code and I completed the code in the initial part of the first, initial part of the third phase, but I spent a lot of time in debugging my code and getting rid of deadlocks. And by the end of the third phase, I was able to upstream the code that I wrote. So after GSOC, I have been uh, doing some minor improvements on the code, but nothing very big. So you can get more details of the project on my blog. So the things that I described, the dependency optimization, the different, the debugging here and different cases. So I have posts for that, which talk about them in more detail. Uh, future work, so uh, one of the future works is having a better criteria to calculate the load. So we need to know how much load is there on a scheduler. And uh, I use the basic criteria, which is the number of jobs on that particular scheduler, which might not be the best way to get the load. And there could be other ways by taking other parameters in, into account. Uh, there are more cases where we can shift entities. 
uh, where it is safe to shift entities, but we need to modify the scheduler a bit to take care of that. So there are, uh, we can do that. Uh, one important thing was that I did was to shift an entity only when we push a job to the uh, entity, which is not ideal because uh, ideally we should do it when a job gets executed. So that's the time when the load is reduced on one particular scheduler and uh, we should check at that time that we have uh, load imbalance to do to better balance it. So that's one thing that could be done. Uh, lastly, also analyze the performance. So the code that he implemented, what is the performance benefits when we look at real life workloads? So I only worked with micro benchmarks, so I don't have any data about this ones. Uh, questions? Any question? Yeah, so I was uh, wondering which are your uh, concrete ideas for better estimating the, the load? Uh, better estimating the load, yeah, sure. So uh, let's assume we have two compute nodes and on compute node one, we have a lot of jobs waiting for being scheduled, right? But the hardware queue is still empty for compute node one. And we have another compute node two, which has less number of jobs waiting, but the hardware queue is full. So by my estimates, I would say that compute node one is more loaded, right? But what is happening is these jobs, they are just waiting because they have some kind of dependency. So they cannot get scheduled, but the hardware queue is actually empty. So taking the number of jobs that we have in hardware queue can be one parameter that gives us better load calculation. Any other question? Thank you very much, Nayan. Uh, Thank you. Thank you.